everyone, Miss Patsy here at Castile Innovation Lab. Today we will be studying the fourth grade science book, Soils, Rocks, and Landforms, Investigation 1, Soils and Weathering, Part 3, Chemical Weathering. Question, how are rocks affected by acid rain? Let's find out. We have seen that rocks break into smaller rocks when they bang and tumble against each other, or when ice expands and breaks them apart. That was called physical weathering. Today, we are going to learn about another kind of weathering. It's called chemical weathering. Chemical weathering is when rocks react with water, oxygen, acid, or organisms. Today, we are going to experiment with rocks reaction with acid. Have you ever heard of acid rain? Sometimes pollutants and other substances dissolve in rain, creating a weak acid known as acid rain. Some pollutants and substances come from natural sources like volcanoes, but other pollutants come from man-made sources like cars and factories. And today we are going to see how rocks are affected by acid. In front of me, I have four different types of rocks. Let's examine each rock. Take out your science journal page titled Rock Observations and draw or write down your initial observations for each rock. First, we have basalt. Basalt is a dark, dense rock from molten lava. Next, we have limestone. Limestone is a type of rock that is made up of bits of animal shells. Next is marble. Marble is a metamorphic rock that developed from limestone. And lastly, we have sandstone. Sandstone is a sedimentary rock made of compacted sand. Now I'm going to add one of my basalt rocks into a vial filled with vinegar. The vinegar is going to simulate acid rain. And we're going to observe what happens to each rock. I'm going to speed up the video since it will be sitting in the vinegar for a few minutes. So watch carefully and record what you observe on your science journal sheet titled Rocks in Acid Rain. Let's start with basalt. Next, we're going to add limestone to vinegar to see what happens. Next, we'll add marble to the vinegar.
Lastly, we're going to add our sandstone to our vinegar. Does anyone observe bubbles coming from any of the rocks? What do you think the bubbles indicate? Bubbles can indicate that there was air trapped in the rock that got pushed out by the acid, but bubbles can also indicate a chemical reaction. Now we're going to let the rocks sit in the acid overnight. Let's take a look at our rocks that have been soaking in vinegar overnight. What do you observe? Let's take a closer look at them one by one. Let's start with the basalt. What do you observe? Write down your observations on the science journal sheet titled Rocks in Acid Rain. Here is the limestone. Write down what you observe here. Next, let's look at marble. Add your observations to your science journal sheet. And lastly is the sandstone. Next, let's think about the bubbles that we saw when we added the vinegar to the rocks. If you look carefully, you can still see it coming from the limestone and the marble. How can we find out if it's a chemical reaction? Does anybody know what these are? These are called evaporation dishes. I'm going to pour the solution from each vial into the dish and let the vinegar evaporate and see what's left in the dish. So let's start with the vial containing basalt. and then the limestone. And then the marble. And lastly, the sandstone. As a control, I will add plain vinegar to this evaporation dish so we can see what plain vinegar evaporated looks like. Now that the vinegar has evaporated from each of our trays, take out 
your acid rain evaporation science journal sheet. And so you can draw in the circles what you observe in our evaporation dishes. Now let's take a look at basalt. Um, it looks like there's a slight residue from the vinegar in our basalt evaporation dish, but nothing in particular. But look at our limestone evaporation dish. There are a lot of crystals in there. Also in the marble evaporation dish. But nothing really in the sandstone dish. Now, if you look at our control, which is the plain vinegar, there are no crystals in the plain vinegar evaporation dish. So that means that these crystals in these dishes did not come from the vinegar. So where do you think they did come from? If you guess they came from the rocks, you are correct. But of course, not all of the rocks only from the limestone and the marble. It's because there was a chemical reaction between the vinegar, the acid, and the limestone and marble. So the chemical reaction was between the acid and the mineral called calcite. Only the limestone and the marble have calcite and the calcite reacts with acids. And since there was a chemical reaction between the vinegar and the limestone and marble, this is an example of chemical weathering. So let's take a look at the crystals up close. Cool. Let's go over our vocabulary words for this investigation. Chemical weathering. When a chemical reaction changes a rock. Pollutant. A substance that makes something impure. Acid rain. Rain that is unusually acidic due to pollution. Basalt. A dark, dense rock from molten lava. Limestone, a type of rock that is made up of bits of animal shells. Marble, a metamorphic rock that developed from limestone. Sandstone, a sedimentary rock made of compacted sand. Dissolved, to become absorbed by or to disappear into something else. Vinegar, a weak acid used in cooking. Evaporation, process of turning into vapor. Chemical reaction, a process in which one or more substances called reactants are changed into something else and result in different substances called products. So what does this tell us? It tells us that out in nature, if acid rain falls on limestone and marble, the acid rain will react with those rocks and cause them to break apart or dissolve. This is called chemical weathering. I hope you enjoyed our investigation for today. Until next time, have a great day.